no secret that animation is hard, with the VFX industry being slammed by massive corporate projects and borderline illegal practices, it's no wonder that the VFX industry is feeling the pain. Each year there's seemingly exponential projects being developed, yet the VFX houses aren't able to match this demand. And what does this cause? Lackluster quality, unprecedented artist burnout, and VFX houses going out of business. This is a problem that needs to be addressed, and it's not something that's going to change overnight. However, I want to draw your attention to something massive that was announced during this year's annual Blender conference and show you how Blender is about to change animation forever. I think I failed. So Blender as a software is more than capable of creating beautiful, high quality animation. Much like other programs, they all have basically the same tool set with minute differences and workflows. During this year's Blender conference, the developers stated a simple goal, and that is to empower animators to keep animating for the next decade. Okay, so what do they mean by that statement? Well, to put it simply, Animation is hard. To animate, you need to first understand Blender's user interface, each different workspace for editing the timing, spacing, and curves for your animation, understanding how your studio's animation rig even works. And on top of all of that, you need to understand the foundations of animation. That's a lot of prerequisites to have even before starting animation. It's not fast, it's not intuitive, and it's not focused. So how does Blender intend to fix this? Well, in short, Blender is pioneering a new set of animation tools. Return to sender. The animation module that's being developed has six key principles in mind. That is fast, intuitive, focused, iterative, direct, and Suzanne. Well, for short, Fiffins. The tools in each of these principles are literally going to change the way we animate in the future. So let's break down each one of these to get a better understanding. Boom! Axe to the neck! Boom! Axe this principle is all about speed. When you're working in a software, you want it to be fast. The faster the software, the faster you can make decisions, and this ultimately leads to creative freedom. So the goal is to create real-time feedback. You've got your interaction speed, which is moving your animation rig, and you've got your playback speed, which is playing back your animation through the viewport. We've all experienced a slow rig <laughs> that moves at like two frames a second, and a terrible playback speed in the viewport. This is what Blender is working on and developing so that you don't have to use hacky workarounds like hiding part of your mesh or exporting a low resolution render to see your final animation in real time. It'll simply just work, which is a massive leap forward. Once Blender is fast enough, it's gonna open up lots of doors to create groundbreaking tools. One example was the ability to use onion skinning for 3D objects. This would allow us to see and edit a previous or future frame directly in the viewport, which again, would make things fast. <laughs> this principle is all about making things easy and familiar. So for example, rigging. When I ask you guys, what do you want to learn most in Blender? It's almost always rigging. And that's understandable. Rigging is kind of hard if you don't know what you're doing. But imagine if there was a component library of preset rigs that you could literally drag and drop onto your character and it just works. Not only that, but rigging is going to be moving to a node-based system. So let's say once you've dragged on your hand rig, you want to edit a few things about it. You could simply jump down to the nodes area, edit the preset to what you need, and you're good to go. They're also bringing in fuzzy search. So kind of like Google, you can search for something loosely and Google will then put in what you actually meant to search. The last part of the intuitive principle is adding in temporary controls. So for example, maybe instead of creating a whole new set of bone constraints or controls for your character rig, you could simply just add in a pin to hold part of your model in world space and complete the rest of your character animation. Or maybe you need a specific controller. So you could select two bones, add in a temporary control, do the rest of your animation, and once you're done with it, check it away. This is one of the more interesting workflows that they're implementing because it's gonna reduce the friction between the animation department and the rigging department. 
simply because they're going to become almost interchangeable. They're not going to have to beg their rigging department to make this complex structure for them. They're simply just going to be able to do it on the fly when they need it. This principle is all about entering the flow state and staying there for as long as possible. As it stands, you have to navigate through multiple different workspaces and try and find things like bone constraints, which are generally buried in the outliner. These kind of tasks tend to distract you and take you away from that flow state. So the obvious solution to this is to just have everything available visually in the viewport. So you can literally click it and locate it immediately. Or another way it would be to have an asset library with visual constraints that you can just drag and drop when you require them. Simple drivers. This will be incredible once implemented. Currently the shape key workflow is you need to edit your mesh or sculpt how the mesh will look in a certain pose. Once it's in that pose, you have to do a whole bunch of other stuff in between to get Blender to push from one pose to another, which can be super time consuming and confusing. What if instead you set up your shape keys, hop into pose mode, hit a button that records the movement from one pose to another, and all the complex stuff that you would manually do gets done for you. This may be one of the most influential aspects of this animation module. Being able to iterate quickly is crucial in a production pipeline, because if someone makes a change to the main character model, that could mean you need to build an entirely new character rig, which not only hurts the rigging department, but every other aspect of the production pipeline. So it's imperative that there's a way to iterate ideas quickly or change your mind on something so that these kind of problems don't come about throughout the production. One way would be to create multiple rig variations. So for example, an animator could say, hey, should this leg rig have a knee controller? The rigger could then just whip up an alternative rig for that knee, switch it over with rigging nodes, and the production pipeline goes on with no issues. Another way to iterate fast would be to create a global animation layer. Currently, all animation is constrained to different rigs and armatures, which makes sense. But what they're proposing is to have one global animation layer, which lets you sort, edit, and organize all of your animations in one layer. This principle is all about making systems that allow you to spend 99% of your time animating directly in the viewport. The first example they gave is a mesh-based control selection. Usually when animating, you need to jump into pose mode, select the bone you need, or try and find the special bone constraint within the outliner, and then begin animating. They're proposing instead, why not hover over the body part you want to move? Blender will then create selection highlighting on that area you're about to pick. And then once you click into it, you've got all your controls right there. This can be expanded on even more. So once you've selected the hand, for instance, there's a bunch of other burn controls that you can select using special hotkeys. It's just a way more direct approach for animating. And there's a lot less room for error when picking the bones you want to animate. Temporal editing. This sort of stems from the temporary editing. Motion paths or motion trails are a visual representation of keyframes in the viewport, which is super handy. What would be even more handy is if you could edit these directly in the viewport without having to jump to the graph editor. And this is exactly what's being planned for development. Instead of jumping to the graph editor, you can click on these motion paths, use the handles, change the spacing and timing, all directly in the viewport, which is a genius idea. Now, I think it needs to be mentioned that this is all planned to be additive, meaning they're not taking away the ability to use the graph editor or make a manual armature. They're simply pioneering a new set of tools for the next generation of animators. These tools are literally going to change the way we animate moving forward, and I cannot wait to get my hands on them. But while we wait, there's one massive problem I see a lot of animators make when just starting out with their animations. And to fix that, you'll want to watch this video right here.